Uh, hi everyone, it's Stephen from Valued and I'm absolutely delighted to introduce uh, Sarah uh, from Richard Reed uh, Solicitors over in Sunderland who are a great, great friend of uh, Valued. Um, we've worked closely together as, as two businesses for a lot of years so I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to, to today's uh, Valued in their own words, Sarah. So would you would you like to just tell everyone a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the firm, if that's all right? Yeah, sure. Well, as you've introduced me, I'm Sarah Reed. I'm from Richard Reed uh, Solicitors. We're based in Sunderland. I'm actually the managing director of Richard Reed. Um, like I say, we're based in Sunderland, um, but we actually deliver a wide range of legal services to both businesses and individuals uh, across the Northeast. Um, on the business side, um, we can advise uh, on all aspects of setting up a company, buying or selling premises. We offer employment advice to employers and also to employees. So if you're in business, you know, we can help you with every aspect of setting up and actually running that business. And, you know, in terms of individuals, you know, we provide services to individuals such as family services, divorce, advice about children, property, buying and selling your home, uh, private client work. So if you need a will or a lasting power of attorney, then, you know, you can turn to us and we can provide you with advice about that. Um, Richard Reed was actually established over 73 years ago and it still carries the name of its founder. Um, Richard Reed was a well-known criminal solicitor in Sunderland who uh, founded the business just after the war. Um, so he started out, you know, doing crime work and then other services were gradually added on. And I, I am quite happy to say that crime is really the only service we don't offer to our uh, community at the present time. Um, but, you, you know, we've, we've moved on. We're not the same business that we were even just a few years ago. You know, we've expanded. We now offer more services and you know including employment um, we saw that as being central to providing a holistic uh, service and to our business clients and meeting their needs and it really is a growth area for for us um, but I think in terms of our business central to everything we do now are our people and our experts you know investing our time energy and resources in the right people means that we can offer a fantastic service and meet all of our clients' expectations. Um, you know, and for, for me, our people are what I'm most passionate about in terms of the role and the job I do at Richard Reed. Uh, you know, for me, it's all about them. They create Richard Reed and they they make it what it is. You know, we've, we've worked really hard to instill our firm's values into everything that we do. Um, those, va those values influence, guide and structure everything we do for our clients. Um, you know, we are big enough to know, but we're also very, you know, we're small enough to care. I think that's a crucial part, isn't it? And it is. We were just talking before we went live here about the, the synergies between Valued and Richard Reed and how yeah. it is about the people. It's about the team. It's about the individual yeah. clients and how yeah. we can work well together and everything. So I would love anybody that's, that's watching this live to interact as much as you want pop say hi tell us whether it's snowing whether it's uh, whether it's sunny or anything it looks like it's the sun's coming out over chelsea street quite nicely yeah. now um <laughs> we've got the the main office up in concert apparently that was really bad before and um, so let us know how you're doing and um, let us know how lockdown's going for you um lockdown version three i guess mm -hmm. just moving on with that one i guess uh, a bit of a, a tricky question i guess but but how's coronavirus for you sarah and for the business yeah. Um, I, su I suppose starting off at the very beginning, you know, I remember um, back in February saying to some colleagues, you know, what if we go into lockdown? You know, China had gone into lockdown. I said, what if we go into lockdown? How will we work? Oh, it'll never happen. But, you know, my job, my role as uh, MD is to plan for what will never happen and to make sure we've got contingencies to ensure that we can still work. And of course, then it did happen, didn't it? And working together, we decided we're just going to send everyone home. So the week before uh, the government locked us down, we said on the Friday, three o'clock, pick up your desktop computers. You know, we didn't even all have laptops, desktop computers. Take what you need from the store cupboard, paper, staples, anything. Take what you need, put it in your car, 
take it home, set up, and then tell us whether it's working. So hopefully everybody could do that before 5 p.m. on the Friday. I think I lost count of how many cables I ordered on Amazon to be delivered to people's home <laughs> addresses. I forgot this cable, forgot that cable, my printer won't work. That's fine. Tell me where you live. I'll send it out to you right, right now. Um, you know, we went out and bought a mobile phone so our receptionist could move to our sofa and bless her for three months. That's exactly what she did. And you know what? That first Monday morning went extremely smooth, smoothly, and it, it, it went smoothly from there on in in terms of working from home. Um, and I think the, the key communicate the key thing was communication and keeping in touch with it, with each other. And it was really hard. I mean, we'd never heard of things like Zoom or I've used WhatsApp, but I'd never made a WhatsApp call or anything like that. And I think keeping in touch with people and making sure we all felt connected that was really that was really important. You know, we had to adapt all of our processes, working from home policies, data protection, how we're going to deal with that when you're sitting in your living room. You know, it, 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 there was a lot to be thought about and a lot and a lot to do. And I had the pleasure of updating all of our policies and making sure everyone knew about it and making sure everyone was coping OK. Um, and I think crucial to everything was our ability to work online. We'd in, invested in a case management system a couple of years before, uh, and that really was uh, key. But I think for us, it was about keeping people safe. You know, when we first went into lockdown, nobody knew. Nobody knew how to keep people safe with this coronavirus how do you do it so sending people home was the absolute right thing to do at that time and it, you know it was the only thing that we could do um but i would say equally it was a struggle for quite a few members of our staff to be at home all of the time and you know there's a lot that we do as solicitors that requires a presence in the in the office so when we got the green light in june to start thinking about going back into the office um we started to look at that and there were two things that were really important one was to work out how we were going to do it so that was a risk assessment and i had to look at each and every process that we did and how we did it and what the answer was in line with the guidance and the advice from the government spent quite a bit of time on that um and then when i had that it then informed how the office could be and how it could work we're quite I suppose lucky that we've got an old office that has individual little rooms so everybody can work in an individual small room that you can close a door and nobody else can go into um or you know if, if we do have to share offices then it can be on different days and there's cleaning in in between so we're quite we, we can keep apart um which made our office quite helpful actually in getting back into it so the next thing to do, the second important thing was to ask our staff about it, because, you know, it was a massive step. The day I stepped back into the office after three months, I felt a little, oh, my God, you know, is this safe? You know, it's the office. Nobody's, you know, hardly been in for three months. Of course, it's safe. But it's that initial reaction. Oh, my goodness. Um, and myself and a colleague spent a whole morning just setting out tape on the floor. Uh, you know, I went through a whole ream of um, blue tack sticking posters on the walls to keep a two metre distance. Go this way. Don't go that way. No entry. You know, I, I was sick of blue tack by the end of that day, but it, it, it was important. And um, I went round the office with my phone and did a little video of the way you went round the office and how you got to where you needed to be. Because I thought if people could see that before they actually stepped into the office, it might be quite reassuring to them because I know how I felt when I, I first stepped back. And like I said, the second most important thing was the staff questionnaire that we that we did. You know, we asked people, we said, look, you know, these are obviously quite sensitive questions, but if you're clinically vulnerable, tell, tell us and then we can we can react accordingly. Do you want to be in the office? Do you want to be at home? If you're coming into the office, actually, how are you going to get there? And is it going to be safe for you to get into the office? Um, and, and we tried to react to each and every staff member's wishes in whether they wanted to work in the office wanted to be at home, I wanted to do a combination of both. And from June, we settled into a routine of um, people being in when they wanted to be in. Obviously, we've got controls around that. And we've got controls about how we are when we're in, in the office and, and, and what have you. But, it, you know, it was very important for us to uh, be able to react to what our staff, mem our staff members wanted and to ensure that everybody was safe, because if they're comfortable, they're going to work better, be that in the office or be that at home. And at, you know, nobody wants to be working in a situation where they're concerned for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, as a business, um, you know, we, we had that side of it to consider. What does our business actually need? And, it, you know, 
I think we set we settled into a very good routine quite quickly. There are some members of staff who are in the office um, on a permanent basis, some who work a few days from home, a few days in the office and keep to those days so we know where we're at. And uh, some who are still completely working at home. But it, it, it did, su did surprise me how many wanted to be back into the office. Um, and I just suppose the office works well from that point of view. So that's what we did. And I, you know, when it came to the lockdown number two, are we on lockdown number three? Yeah, I think we yeah. are, aren't we? That started this this week. Oh my goodness. Um, lockdown number two, uh, we really considered quite seriously what we should do, but it was different. Lockdown two was different to lockdown mm -hmm. one because lots of things were open that were previously not open, like the, the property market. And there are certain aspects of the work that we do that can't be done if you're purely working from home. And there are situations where you do need to see clients in your offices. We have all of the procedures that we need to have in place. We have a visitor guide that we send to everyone before they come into our office. Th this is what you'll see when you come into our office. You know, sorry, you can't use our f facilities and, you know, please bring your own water because we can't offer you a drink, which is it's really sad, but we just can't. And please bring your own pen. But actually, if you forget, we'll give you a pen and you can use that. And we'll think very carefully about the documentation that we're sharing, whether it should be quarantined for a few days, if we can beforehand hand sanitizer on the tables, cleaning afterwards. So we're, we're very thorough in our procedures and we, you know, we, we can't accept walk-ins to our office. If someone walks in or wants to walk in, um, then, you know, we try to take details and call them back straight away, but we've just got to be very careful. It protects them and it also protects our staff as, as well. So, and I, I think that's worked extremely well. And we took the view last, well, just, just this week, isn't it? Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of staff members affected by children being at home, so they need to be at home as well. We're just trying to support each other in the best way that we can so we can get through 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 this and make sure we come out as strong as we go into it, really. really. So, Definitely. yeah, that was a very lengthy answer, Stephen. No, no, it was a great answer, to be honest. It was a great <laughs> answer. I think it actually, again, beforehand, you and I have known each other for a lot of years, so we were talking about yeah. some stuff as well, and we were saying, like, when we very first, first got involved, becoming the MD of the businesses, uh, our respective businesses, you kind of, you didn't envisage your time that you would have people working at home. You didn't envisage your time. I wouldn't envisage no. your time where I wasn't wearing a tie. No, yeah, I know. Then you kind of go, hang on a minute, we're working at home. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, yeah, life has changed so much. Life has changed so much. So the next question I would like to ask you if it's all right is what's your biggest frustration with the industry and how do you solve that? Oh, um, there's probably quite a few things I can uh, raise as frustrations with the industry. It's it's difficult. You know, I, I love what we do. I love that we help people. Um, you know, the, the law can be a complicated structure and it can be difficult to, to navigate. I do think there's some um, scope to make some processes easier so people can manage them on, on their own. And I think that's a frustration for many people when it comes to the law that they can't help themselves. Um, there will always be a time when you need expertise and that's what we're here for. Um, and, you know, you know, we have the expertise to guide people through what they need and to get the best outcomes for them. I, I think my biggest frustration would take me back to uh, my practice in law, which is is family law. That's that's my background. Um, and I, I think having a less adversarial approach to matters would be helpful. You know, if two people are separating, divorcing, the last thing they need is the art, is the lawyers arguing too, um, be, because they're arguing between themselves. That's why they've got they've got you because they can't reach a, 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 a solution. Or you know, nine times out of ten, that's that's why it is. And I, I think you know, having seen how adversarial some lawyers can be, but also how collaborative, truly working together, despite being on different sides, um, but only ever aiming to get the best for for your client, but in a constructive way and you know th the worst words i ever heard as a family lawyer from a client were you know i want to take them for everything they've got and my response was usually well you've got the wrong lawyer because that's never going to be the outcome for you the, the best outcome for you and it's never going to be the best outcome for your ch children so i think a frustration for me is that i think we could have a less adversarial approach and in doing so we would get an even better outcome for our cli clients because you know particularly in in family law when you've you know when the lawyers leave the family's still there 
and they have to live as a family still, even if they're not living in the same household, particularly you know, mainly where there are children. And, you know, I would often say to my clients, look, you know, in terms of how we approach this, one day you might be lucky enough for there to be a graduation or a wedding or a christening and you need to be able to be in that room with your child on that special day and everybody to be comfortable with that how awful would it be if it was uncomfortable on on, on a day like that and I, I hope that that gets them to think about um the approach that they want to take to this regardless of what's happened between the both of them which can be very diff difficult one of the worst things you'll ever face in life i think separate separation it's a, it's a type of bereavement and i think um you know if the lawyers make that worse then we failed oh, well, that, that is beautiful to hear that, that genuinely i wasn't expecting that answer to be honest but that's <laughs> absolutely beautiful yeah because i i kind of see it from the accountant side as well where yeah. you do have two families that, that are, they're just bashing against each other and you think well, what's the point we've and got to make that better not worse yeah. We've got to make it better. I love that part that you just mentioned there. It, uh, God willing, one day you might have a, a wedding yeah. to go to or a graduation. And actually, mm. you've got to be able to get on with your ex in some way. To yes, to absolutely. That. That, that, that's wonderful to hear. That's wonderful. So thank you for that. If you could go, next question, if you could go back to the beginning of your business, what would be the one bit of advice that you would tell yourself? Oh, well, um, well, the beginning of this business was an awful long time ago, you know, 73 years to be precise. Um, you know, the business is nearly older than my parents, but I don't think they're watching. So I think that's okay to say. Um, and, you know, the business was actually started by its namesake, you know, Rich, Richard Reed. Um, there's no family connection. My surname is spent, spelled differently. I just happened to get married two weeks after I joined Richard Reed and took the same sur surname. Um, but, it, you, you know, if I go back to when um, I started in this business, I became an owner in 2009. I would say I was naive. You know, I was a lawyer. I wasn't a manager. I didn't know anything about owning a business, understanding accounts, being a partner, or even having responsibilities like that. Even being an employer, one day you just work. You know, you're you're working for somebody else. The next day you're working for yourself. And, you know, I just knew that I wanted to, to, to do it. But the point, problem was no one tells you how to do it. And the other issue I had is well, we were in the middle of a recession. And, you know, the, one of my first things I ever remember having to do as a business owner was to make redundancies. And I had to do that. And it, it, it was awful. I still remember specific conversations because it it was hard and I really felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I, I think I would now, if I could go back and say, this is what you need to do, Sarah, it's invest more time in understanding what I was getting into on all sorts of different levels. And I would tell myself to invest in being a better leader because that's crucial. Fantastic. Um, I wouldn't change what I did, though. You know, 10 years later, I'm the managing d director. Um, I own 50 percent of the business. You know, it. It was hard financially in the beginning, two young children, mortgage, huge business loan. You know, like, what if we went bust? You know, the recession was at its height. Um, looking back, maybe I was just mad. But, you know, I, I sat down with my husband and we said, right, what's the worst that will happen if the worst happens? What will I lose? And we both decided that we could live with that. So I, I did it. Um, we did it, I suppose. I, I can't forget uh, Mr. Reed and all of this. And, um, you know, it was all I ever wanted to be was a partner and an owner of a law firm. But I think I, I really needed to think wider about that and what it actually meant and the responsibilities on, on me. You know, I had no aspirations to start my own firm, but I wanted to be part of one. And I wanted to be behind the growth and leadership of a truly great firm. Um, you know, one that truly believed in the work that it does and strives for quality and delivers on the expectations of its clients. And that's what we're trying to do, you know, every, every day in the job that we do. And the, the best thing that I get in the role that I uh, do is great feedback of a job well done. So, yeah. This could maybe link into the next question I was going to ask you if that's all right. Okay, yeah. Tell us what your proudest moment as a business owner is. Oh, um, well, I suppose there's a very... I suppose a, a very personal proud mo moment was when I was asked to be a partner. Um, I was 29 years old and I remember being called into the senior partner's office. The other partner was there. I had no idea what they were going to ask me, but they asked me to be a partner. I said, like, oh, wow, okay, went home with a bottle of champagne to tell, tell my husband. Um, and also, I suppose, that as being a business owner, it was becoming MD. You know, I was 
39, um, a week off being 40, but I'll hold on to that 39 for a bit longer. Um, and, you know, to be MD and to be tasked with the leadership and, and management of a law firm that employs 34 people. I mean, it's it to, to have that um, trust placed in me, I think that's got to be a, a very proud moment for me. But that's just a moment in time. And it, it's so much more than that in terms of what it is to be uh, a business owner. You know, I am completely and continuously proud of the people that work in our business and what they achieve and particularly what they've done in the past year to support the business and the firm and each other and also our clients. I mean, it's just ex exceptional how they've made it work. They, they really have. You know, we seek client feedback as well on every matter we get. Um, and, you know, I read and record every bit of uh, feed feedback and we get great feedback. And that's, I would say that's my proudest. That, that's what makes me the most proud when we get good feedback and, you know, we, we share it with our team and we say, look, you know, this is this is what we're achieving day in and day out. And that's just I'm very proud, proud of that. So it's our people. It's not just one moment. It's a it's a continuous thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think from an outsider looking in all the charitable work that you do as an organisation. Yes. Yeah. The culture, the the perception of, of Richard Reed's culture is just phenomenal. And that's why we, we recommend every client works with you guys oh. because you know what, there's a great fit, but you do care about the individuals. We you do care about the businesses, we do. But the individuals behind the businesses as well. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you for that. So if you were gonna start out in business or you're gonna give some advice to somebody starting out in business, what would that advice be? Um I think you've got to understand your business. You've got to understand your client base and where it comes from, how you can engage with it. You need to understand how marketing works in this day and age. And particularly after this last year, you've got to understand that and you've got to do it. And if you don't understand it, you need to train yourself on it. Or you need to, you know, there's lots out there in terms of uh, teaching yourself how to do things. And that's so important. Um, but I think the key is when you're ready to take on people, you need to surround yourselves with the best ones and need to invest in them so recruitment and it starts at the very beginning recruitment is one of the most important things that you'll ever do and the key is to getting that right um so if it takes a little bit of time and resource then do it and then once you've got them you invest in them and you continually invest in them so you in the time you be considerate you consult you listen and you take on board what they say um, you know your people are your strongest asset and they'll revel in the good times and they'll come together but they will get you through the bad times and, you know, and that's what you need. And, you know, you need to be fair, you need to reward and you need to lead and manage well and listen, give you time and just be there. You know, it's the most important thing because we are nothing without our team. Nothing. I totally, totally echo that. Yeah. yeah I think, um, I actually haven't told the greater world, but a, one of our clients, a very good friend of, of valued is Jeff Ram. You know, oh yeah. Where's my camera? Uh, yeah. Celebrity service superstars and valued are actually in there. Um, oh, I was, fantastic! I'm blown away by the fact that they've, they've done, that Jeff's done that for us, and he talks a lot about our people. We yeah. talk a lot, or I talk a lot about our people in there, um, and I just think that's phenomenal. To be honest, I've actually I've just looked at my phone as well for any comments as well, just see if, if anything was coming through. And Amber, um, I'm an employee of Richard Reed, and the whole COVID situation has been handled brilliantly for both staff and our clients. Huge kudos to Sarah and the other directors. I think that just speaks volumes. Yeah, I think that's very kind of Amber. That's very, very kind. But I think that, that's that's great. I guess uh, we've opened it up to, to any questions as well. We generally hmm. don't get a lot of questions that come through. If it, we'll we'll leave it open for a um, Jeff's just wrote superstars on there. Um, <laughs> So uh, he is listening. He is. I wasn't expecting him to reply to that. To be fair, um, yeah. So if anyone has got any questions or anything that they would, they would like to ask to either Sarah or myself, more than happy to do that. We'll keep the stream open for another couple of minutes. But we do know that we get a lot of people come back and watch it yeah. later on because obviously people are trying to yeah. do whatever they can manage. The business right mm. now, manage manage everything that they can. So we don't always um, get everything. At, at, at one point but as always just like sarah did uh we're asking for anybody else 
that wants to actually profile their business but also get asked similar questions just to get in touch with us just so that we can actually um, get business owners talking about what it's like to run a business because I think sometimes and Sarah I would imagine you're probably the same your perception of running a business when you very first started the journey was totally different to what it is in reality massively yeah. different yeah. I, I always remember talking to to my, my ex-girlfriend a long long time ago um and saying i just want to be equity partner and then yeah. <laughs> partner, I'm thinking oh my god really i'm working more hours now for a salary partner I'm, I'm working more hours now than i ever worked and yeah you didn't you didn't get that multi-million pound lifestyle and everything just because you had the title so life yeah. does uh, life is is challenging but it's so so rewarding especially with the team as well and working with with great team members as well I think we need to support each other as well as business owners. I think it, it, it's it's very important to share, you know, how you're managing and how you're getting on and, you know, just to, to share what works for you. Because I think, you know, we are, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a community, aren't we? And we all are in this together, particularly what's happened over the, over the last year. And we do need to support each other. I think that's really important. So I think this is a great for, forum that you've got here, uh, Stephen, and I think it'll work very well. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we've also had uh, Nicola as uh, I would second Amber's comment as well. So I'm oh, guessing thank you. Nicola could be part of the team as well there. So yes. thank you so, yes. so much for uh, for joining us today. If anybody did have any questions, they wanted to, to get in touch with you, Sarah, what's the what's the best way of doing that? Well, they can email me. I don't mind giving out my email address directly. It's sarah.read, but it's R-E-I-D at richardreed.co.uk. If there's a more general question about the services that we pr provide or you, you know you want to get in touch with one of our experts, then you can use the info at richardreed, that's rwed.co.uk. You've got to get the read and the read right, I'm afraid. Um, or you can just ring, ring our office. It's 0191 567 0465. And we can put the contact details in the chat if that's okay, Stephen. Yeah, not a problem whatsoever. Not uh, a problem. I've also put the, uh, the Facebook link on there as yes. well obviously yeah. facebook as well so let's not forget could, that uh, could contact you on there as well all right but sarah i would just like to, to say a huge thank you for you taking the time out um there's, there's all sorts of stuff happening in the world right now so i do really really appreciate you taking the time out well thank, thank you for having me it's been lovely it's been lovely having a chat with you Stephen. bless you thank you so much all right hope everyone stays safe um let's, let's make the best of this lockdown let's let's help each other as much as we possibly can and if anybody else would like to go on this uh, weekly session feel free to get in touch with us. All right, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Bye now. Bye.